ante rahula your uh, microphone is should unmute got it oh wait uh there we go yes. right now it's mute can you hear me brian loud and clear bante loud and clear okay so good to be with you no oh, thank you very much and uh and it seems that i've seen this place before here sounds like seems like i'm sitting in a meditation hall again <laughs> familiar faces too yes well hello to all my friend, friends out there in the bante g i want to thank bante g for inviting me to participate in this very uh, uh, auspicious and valuable uh, program. Uh, so uh, I was asked today to, uh, you know, give a talk in a, in a meditation practice on uh, awareness of uh, the body. And <clears throat> I think most of you, uh, you know, have a familiarity with the teachings of the Buddha and the, the main teachings on developing uh, mindfulness and insight meditation are outlined in the four foundations of uh, mindfulness. And, you know, that starts with mindfulness uh, of the body. And there's an important uh, reason for that, because this body is basically the home for our mind. Now, we all know that the deepest roots of suffering, even though we have physical sufferings, but uh, the, the deep root of suffering that the Buddha mentioned was uh, mental. And it's in the past accumulated uh, thoughts of greed, hatred, and delusions over uh, many uh, lifetimes, or even this lifetime, that are remembered in the unconscious uh, mind. And they come up, all these habits, habits of thinking, worrying, fear, guilt, worry, remorse, greed, and hatred, and, and so on. Uh, these, all, you know, these are always coming up as fetters and hindrances uh, to cause us problems in our regular life, as well as even in our meditation. So, you know, the mind operates through this body. And the body is always in the present moment. It's always just here, whether it's sitting, standing, walking, moving, uh, laying down. It's always in the present moment. It's our mind that's always going back and forth between the past and the future. We remember something from the past, uh, something uh, you know, stimulates a, a memory to come up or an emotion and we project that into the future. Uh, because our mind is not uh, grounded in the present uh, moment. So we, and it's not grounded in the body because the mind operates through the, the delicate nervous system of the body. And actually the mind was born together with this uh, body. And at the moment of conception, when you are just a, a one cell new organism in the mother's womb, uh, you know, consciousness is already has come and has joined together with that uh, the new <clears throat> name and form or that one cell organism. So consciousness basically as is there at the, the moment of conception or shortly after. And for nine months, that consciousness was uh, going through the cell division and going as the cells divided, consciousness went into each of those cells and they're all interconnected. So in nine months, for nine months, that's all the mind knew really was this body. It's intimately uh, connected uh, to the body because consciousness, every cell of the body has a kind of consciousness or rudimentary awareness. And they're all tied together. And that's how the 
the body knows they heal itself, they communicate, you know, you feel something in your toe, your brain knows about it, and uh, vice versa. So the, the body and mind really cannot be uh, really separated. Uh, we can be unmindful of it, of course, but, uh, but the main thing is that, uh, you know, for nine months, the, the body and mind were intimately connected and mostly in the present uh, moment, just with that tremendous life force going through. But only after birth, and then after the young baby is, comes out of the womb and after several months, when people start giving it all kind of attention and, and so on, uh, it loses that uh, intimate connection with the inner uh, body and, and the sensations of uh, the body and, and starts to uh, focus outwardly. And, uh, and then because people giving it things and it, and it gets caught up in then pleasurable and painful feelings and it's memories of, you know, uh, people give it uh, pleasant uh, objects and then it, it starts to want uh, that person to come again in the future because that person uh, uh, gives them pleasurable feelings or if somebody, some object gives it a painful feeling, it, it then starts to not want that object to come again in the future. And so it gets, it, that's how the past and the future is born in the mind actually. And, uh, and it becomes focused in the external world and it starts developing greed, wanting these pleasurable feelings uh, again in the future and wanting the painful feelings not to come again in the future. And this process of mind uh, just uh, keeps on uh, snowballing as we repeat our habits. So, and as the person grows up, their mind gets, you know, everything is in the future, basically. Most people's minds are constantly in the future, especially younger people. Because younger people, you know, believe that they're going to have, uh, you know, a whole life ahead of them. And hopefully most of them do, but uh, we know that many uh, don't even survive, uh, you know, childhood. Uh, and old people, they don't have much future to think about, so they ruminate more in, in the past. And mainly it's because they become disconnected from uh, the body. And that, that's why I think the Buddha chose mindfulness of the body as a way to get reconnected to the present moment. Again, it's not just the body, but the body is in the present moment. So when we are feeling the body, when we remember what the body is doing, now it's sitting. You just keep on remembering, sitting, sitting, or breathing in, sitting, breathing out, sitting. If you can keep remembering that for longer and longer, then you will stop thinking about the past and the future so much. And, uh, and all problems are associated with the past and the future. Try to think of any problem that you have and see if it's not connected in one way or another with the past or the future. You know, I think you'd be hard pressed to, to find any problem that's not connected to the past or the future. So, by learning to, uh, to get re-grounded and connected uh, in, in the body as a way for entering that flow of present moment uh, awareness. Uh, and so uh, that's why you know, the, the Buddha chose the, the body. And one of the, the reasons, there are some other reasons too, but uh, uh, the one that I feel is the more important is that it helps you to get Re-established and grounded and connected in the body where the mind is operating from. You get you get in tune with the the subtle vibrations and sensations of of the body that normally we're not aware of, uh, and that is where the mind is operating from. So the mind is in the, the sensations, perceptions, thoughts, memories, and emotions are all you know, arising as uh, reactions from various stimulation and they're arising from the unconscious uh, into our conscious mind. But we don't see them when they're ar arising because our mind is either half asleep 
or it's uh, lost in various thoughts. So we don't see our thoughts, feelings, and emotions arising because uh, we're not uh, grounded and centered in, in, the, in the subtler awareness. So this is, uh, this is kind of just a, a sort of a, you know, a theoretical uh, you know, basis of uh, the awareness of the body and, and its importance in developing the meditation practice. Because again, the body is something we have with us all the time. 24-7, we're carrying this 100 or more pound body around with us all the time. And we've never been taught how to use it uh, properly, how to use it to, to maintain present moment awareness, to maintain being grounded and centered. Who's ever taught you that? Besides, you know, maybe meditation teachers. But your parents didn't teach you that. Even the doctors that you had when you were young probably never taught you that. Politicians don't teach you that. You know, these are very essential uh, points. And only somebody like the Buddha really emphasized that and that uh, uh, all the aspects of the mindfulness of the body teaching, the first foundations of mindfulness are all about learning how to keep the attention in the body, whether you're contemplating the 32 body parts, whether you're contemplating the four elemental uh, vibrations and so on. Even while contemplating those, your, your attention is in, in the body and feeling those uh, sensations. Uh, but in, in meditation practice also, uh, you know, the nervous system is, you know, meditation happens between your brain and the spinal column, really. That's where life takes place. Because life is nothing more, the process of life are simply moments of hearing seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, and then thinking and reacting to those things or remembering uh, memories uh, that are occurring uh, in the present moment. And the, uh, in order to be able to uh, really clearly see those, then the nervous system has to be in an in a optimal state and especially in sitting meditation. So that's why the posture is very important. In fact, you know, the very first teachings of meditation, you know, in the uh, either the Anapanasati Sutta or the Four Foundations of Mindfulness, even before watching the breath, the very first instructions where a person sits down and keeps their back straight, right? Keeps their back straight. That's where a lot of people overlooked that. And a lot of people can't keep their back streets because they haven't done the proper exercises, you know? And, uh, and so their, their back muscles are not very strong or they've uh, injured their spine or maybe just for some other reasons, but basically, and also our neck muscles. And so the first thing that happens when you sit to meditate is gravity, you know, grabs this head you know, that weighs uh, five or more pounds. And the, the, this head is resting on your neck vertebrae about the size of a 25 cent piece. And gravity is trying to pull it down. The first thing that happens, gravity grabs this big chin sticking out. And you see people's chin start going down. And when the chin starts going down, that causes the shoulders to collapse and people start, uh, you know, slouching. When you look around the meditation hall, you'll see, you know, quite a lot of people, you know, sitting in a uh, some degree of a slouched posture. And it's similar to like if you have a garden hose at home, and you turn the water on, the hose is straight, the water comes out with its full pressure. But if you crimp the hose, then the and the water pressure slows down and the volume of water comes out. So it's the same way. If we're uh, slouching in meditation, that uh, sort of crimps the, the wires of the nervous system, so to speak, uh, and slows down the flow of psychophysical uh, energy and electromagnetic energy that, uh, you know, that is uh, 
occurring within in the body, uh, or at least the circulation also. So therefore, maintaining a, a good posture is part of that. And that's why, for those of you who are familiar with sort of my style of teaching, I encourage people to practice yoga. And oftentimes before meditation, we do a few stretches in order to help to get some feeling in the body. You know, a lot of people don't have much feeling in their body and their body is kind of like half dead. They only feel their body when they stub their toe or get a toothache or uh, cut their finger or, or get sick. Oh, you know, then they're momentarily brought back to their body, usually for a painful feeling. But otherwise, people's minds are predominantly in the future or just lost in their daydreams. Uh, and not really uh, have a good connection uh, with the body. And that's why we so easily get lost in our thoughts because we don't see the thoughts rising up from the, the unconscious mind. And uh, thoughts rise up very, very, you know, craftily and take us over before we even know it. So that's the importance of learning how to stay alert and grounded uh, in the body uh, to gain that uh, uh, mindfulness and concentration. And so the, the breathing is part of uh, in the body. A lot of people make a difference between just watching the breath or, or just uh, you know, examining uh, the body, but really you know, only a very, higher levels of meditation can you uh, really separate that. Uh, but for most intents and purposes, uh, the body and breathing, uh, you know, is uh, very uh, integrated. And some people may not just be, some people may not be able to just sort of, let's say if you're focusing the awareness at the tip of the nose, it's a very subtle sensation. So it may not be strong enough to hold a person's attention and uh, so they you know may not uh, you know be able to develop that kind of awareness uh, at least very quickly but uh, is you know if you feel the breathing let's say in the middle of the body with the expanding and contracting sensations of the abdomen rib cage or chest then that's a more uh, dynamic uh, feeling and there's more sensations connected with that uh, as Bhante G had been mentioning also earlier in his uh, meditation instructions uh, earlier this morning about how you feel the breath as it comes in through the nostrils, but then as it, you know, you feel the expanding and contracting uh, sensations uh, of the breathing. So that can also be used as a focal point of developing uh, concentration. For I'd, I'd rather call it concentrated uh, awareness. But uh, anyway, so the learning how to uh, you know, develop that mindfulness of the breathing in the body, that's why I call it uh, the, the breathing uh, body, because whether it's just the body sensations, feeling the blood pulsing in your arteries or feeling any little, you know, subtle itching or other type of sensations, uh, those are all in the present moment. Those are still arising in the present moment. Uh, the same as the sensations of the breathing process are occurring in the present moment. So uh, it's about keeping the mind in the present moment and you know, not necessarily focused on one tiny point, although one can do that, but it's not all, it's not uh, you know, uh, absolutely necessary because even just that uh, the breathing body, you feel you know, the, the breathing going in and out, but you know, all around it, there's other sensations that are, are also coming and going, but it's a gradual process of uh, learning how to tune in to uh, that uh, body. Uh, what's called the, the body in the body. And that's a term that you will uh, read in the, uh, you know, the mindfulness of 
breathing or the four foundations of mindfulness. It talks about, you know, the body in the body. That means feeling the breath body within the larger physical uh, body. Because, you know, when you really get concentrated, uh, you can feel the rippling effects of the breathing, especially if you're feeling the sensations of expanding and contracting, you know, the expansion of the, the lungs and so on is pushing a lot of flesh, you know, the rib cage is pushing a lot of flesh out and that's sending rippling uh, vibrations throughout the whole uh, body that you can feel if you have uh, uh, deep awareness. So, uh, you know, one can focus on the breathing exclusively in the beginning, but at some point, uh, then opening back up to feeling uh, the, the breathing body, but within the greater, larger body too. And that's where the, uh, like the contemplation of the, the four elements to feel the earth vibration, water vibration, heat vibration, uh, motion vibration. Basically, these are the sensations that you feel in the body. Uh, you know, you feel the buttocks pressing the seat. There's an earth vibration. I, I like to call it the vibration rather than the element, but uh, because that's what it is, basically. It's kind of a vibration of the nervous system. It's basically the cells and, you know, the compressed cells and molecules and atoms of this body. Because that's what this body is, actually. You know, this body is just, and any biologist can tell you that this body is comprised of billions of cells. Cells are comprised of many thousands or millions of molecules. Molecules are comprised of many thousands and millions of uh, atoms. And atoms have elect electrons going around them. That's what differentiates uh, different types of matter is the amount of uh, electrons going around the nucleus. And so electrons is basically electricity. And so this body is, that's all the body is really, is, is a mass of, of vibrations in that sense. And uh, so the, the four element meditation, contemplating the four elements, is you're feeling these things, you know? You feel your buttocks pressing the seat. Instead of saying, that's my buttocks pressing the seat, you say, that's the earth vibration. Or my hands touching together, the earth vibration or feeling your lips touching together, the earth vibration, uh, or feel saliva in your mouth, the water vibration. So like that, uh, uh, even in the, the contemplation of, you know, within the contemplation of the body, it's about tuning in to these uh, sensations. And even if you're contemplating 32 body parts, the only way you know a body part is by feeling the quality of its sensation. You can feel the, you know, the head hair, you know, like a certain sensation that that causes, or body hair, or the skin, or the teeth, the nails, all your different organs. Every every part of the body has a different quality vibration to it. Uh, so I'm just saying that to point out how these contemplations of the body, even though, you know, you're supposed, to, you know, you contemplate uh, these body parts and seeing them as impermanent and so on. But uh, that's one aspect, but in order to get detachment from it. But the other one is to help you to keep the attention grounded in the body and to feel the subtle uh, vibrations of it. because everything else comes from vibration. And basically, you know, the five aggregates are material form and that means the vibrations actually uh, and then the feelings that these vibrations produce these vibrations are felt as something painful or something pleasant or something neutral but it's the vibration which is the material uh, is the material ele element uh, and then the perception then you you, you the, the mind remembers that feeling of what your hands touching together is. And then it, it says, oh, that's my hands touching together. But that's just, a, it's, remember, it's remembering a, a sensation. 
you know, perception. Perception is simply a mental picture of the vibrations of how we've learned through language and conditioning to, uh, you know, to identify it. And this is a very important part of understanding how the mind works, where the mind turns vibration, which is essentially an empty vibration into some kind of an object that's then projected in time and space. And then we get attached to it. And we develop our love and hate relationships to it, our greed and anger, because we, we don't understand the real nature, the elusive nature of, of perception. And even the Buddha gave a simile of the five aggregates, you know, as, you know, the bodily uh, body material form is like foam, right? You see some foam floating on a river and you go out and poke it with a stick. You see, it's not really solid, you know, it's just you kind of just in the same way. This body is just compressed energy and it's not solid. Uh, but the illusion of the solidity comes. And then the perception is like a mirage. You know, a mirage is something that appears to be real out in front of you, but when you, you never get to it because the closer you get to it, it keeps on going further away. So anyway, I'm just uh, mentioning these things because this is part of that you know, investigation of the Dhamma, but it, it starts from being grounded in the body uh, because again, that's, that's where you're, you're able to see these, you know, subtler uh, sensations that normally we're, we don't uh, feel them. And, uh, and the more that you can feel, the more focused and concentrated uh, you will uh, become. And that's also one of the reasons why I teach yoga or I have people do some yoga stretches before meditating uh, because when you're doing that and, and also when, I, when you combine it with a deep slow breathing and doing these simple kind of stretching movements you can almost feel like this electricity you know going up and down uh, you know the body or in certain parts of of the body and if you do several of them you can kind of feel this uh, you know, kind of just the inner, you know, vibrations like you were standing or sitting on a vibrating machine, being the activated uh, life force uh, that comes through, you know, deep breathing and then the exercises that help to get that oxygenated blood out to the cells of the body to charge them up. Because again, most people's bodies are half dead because one thing, they don't do deep breathing very much. And their breaths are, breaths are very shallow, short and shallow. And so they have to breathe quicker in order to get enough oxygen into the bloodstream in order to properly feed all of the cells of the body. But you can't do, if you're slouched, it's very difficult to do deep, slow breathing because your chest is contracted and the rib cage are contracted in. But when you're, you're sitting straight, then uh, you can feel that kind of expansion and, uh, you, and also holding the air in the lungs for a couple of seconds allows time for all that oxygen to get out into the bloodstream and, and out to all the cells of the body. And by just doing that kind of deep, slow breathing for uh, you know five minutes or so, you, you feel very energized. And especially if you uh, also do uh, combining it with some uh, uh, movements. And then when you sit down, it's like you're already meditating is it? because you're, you have something to immediately come back to and hold your attention because by and large, it's quite pleasant. A lot of times we only react and feel the painful sensations in our body, but uh, when you are doing this kind of, you know, breathing and, and the proper type of exercise, there could be some pain associated with it, but there will also be this pleasant kind of uh, vibrations there too. 
that uh, help to hold your attention in the present moment. Because if the mind, the mind is always seeking pleasure. And if it doesn't find any pleasure in the body, it's going to go to the past and the future and try to drag up all kind of you know, memories and, and so on. So we have to create a pleasant environment for the mind to want to hang out. You know, it's going to hang out with the body, right? People like to hang out with others. Or people like to hug other people's bodies, don't they? What about hugging your own body? Now, that doesn't mean you're hugging it in a narcissistic way or something like that. That means you're just feeling that intimate, bubbling kind of life force that's going on, that's natural, that's nature, that's pure nature, that's going on just under your skin, literally just beneath your nose. There's a parallel universe. There's a parallel dimension of the subtle body. And uh, when you get uh, in tune with that, then it's very, very easy to meditate because that's also, it, it tunes you into the stream of the present moment awareness. The natural state of our mind is present moment awareness, but we've lost that. Uh, just like with the baby, you know, when it first comes out of the womb, the baby's mind is still basically in the present moment. It doesn't have thoughts of past or future in it. That only comes later after several months. Again, as I mentioned before, with people coming over and giving it things and, you know, giving it its first chocolate. And, you know, mm -hmm, yeah, I want that again, you know. But then thinking about when are you going to get that again? One. So uh, when the mind is in the present, uh, then these thoughts uh, don't come up. So, uh, and that's why, you know, concentration, right? The, the jhana factor. So you can, by keeping the mind in the present moment, actually that's also concentration. You know, concentration is simply unbroken mindfulness. Mindfulness is, means alertness. Now we can focus that alertness on one object if we want, or we can just rest it in the present moment and be alert to the, the stream of uh, impermanence and sensations that are uh, constantly coming and going. Of course, that's the vipassana, uh, you know, method or the, the development of the uh, vipassana awareness. But basically, uh, when you're able to follow that stream of awareness without the mind getting uh, distracted or lost, basically that's very similar to the state of a jhana. And you get piti and the sukha coming up with uh, that. Uh, and that's your applied and sustained attention when you, your mind is uh, you know, really grounded and focused in that uh, breathing body process. And then you can easily see the, when the, the, the thoughts that are being triggered off by you know, maybe some unpleasant sensations or pleasant sensations or the random memory because you're deeply grounded. So anyway, this again, this is just a kind of a overview of that, uh, you know, what, what the process of the, the body and mind is and where you know, the meditation really uh, starts with that. And the, the whole foundation, you know, the four foundations of mindfulness is a step-by-step is -step method for learning how to re-enter uh, the flow of awareness without getting trapped by our uh, feelings, perceptions, volitions, and even our ego consciousness uh, and so on. But, you know, it's easier to observe the body than the mind uh, in, the, in the beginning. And also because, as I mentioned, the, the body is the natural uh, stepping stone to reach the mind. And, uh, you know, it automatically, that awareness automatically un, unfolds. So, uh, and then you know, all insights come out of that. Uh, and so, you know, you can gain concentration, mindfulness and concentration. 
a lot of people, you know, they, they hear about concentration and when they think, uh, you know, all the things they've heard about, oh, you get concentrated and if you just get blissed out and maybe you'll be able to have some kind of powers or something like that. And so uh, a lot of people want to just immediately try to concentrate. Most of them don't succeed very uh, much. And that was never the Buddhist teaching. And uh, in all the Buddhist teaching, mindfulness comes first. In all the lists of mental factors, the mindfulness comes first. In the uh, Eightfold Path, of course, we see that mindfulness precedes concentration. In the spiritual faculties, we see that mindfulness precedes concentration. In the seven factors of enlightenment, even mindfulness precedes concentration. Concentration doesn't arise until the, the, the sixth level. Uh, so, and, and as I said, because concentration is simply unbroken mindfulness. And the reason why we can't get concentrated is because we're not mindful of the hindrances. Those are the things that block our uh, concentration. If the mind didn't have hindrances, we would always be in a concentrated state. That means the present moment. The concentrated state means the mind is resting in the present moment. It's either resting, focusing on a particular object, or it's resting in the present moment. And the flow of awareness is it's uh, the objects coming and going, but the mind is not moving. The mind is resting in the present moment. That's a concentrated uh, state. So you can reach concentration through uh, developing mindfulness. Uh, and of course, that's, you know, you've heard the terms, I'm sure Bankaji has talked about this quite often, about, you know, there's, uh, uh, you know, some people who are good at concentration, okay, they might choose a meditation subject like Anapanasati, practice that, and uh, maybe without uh, too much difficulty, uh, they might be able to develop concentration. But the danger is getting stuck in that and not wanting to then use that concentrated state then to reflect on it and develop insight into even the impermanence of these jhana factors and impermanence of, of the mind. But uh, anyway, that's that's a whole other topic. But so, uh, so this is what I wanted to uh, you know, to share with you and also in the, uh, after, in, in, in a short time, then uh, <clears throat> we're gonna, after the, this talk, then I want to, uh, for those who like, I want to uh, stand up for a short break because you've already been sitting for quite a while and then do a, uh, several minutes of this, uh, some, simple breathing and, and, and stretching. They're not difficult, very easy. Uh, before we sit down to uh, do uh, the meditation. So, uh, the, <clears throat> so uh, you know, in the awareness of the body, uh, again, the idea is to use that body as to become grounded and centered. So I, I use these terms grounded and centered because uh, being centered means it's kind of your feeling sensations all around. Once you get grounded in the body and the, you know, the, the breathing is there in the middle and you never let go of the breathing because the breathing is always there in the center of the body, especially if you're focusing on the expanding and contracting movements, uh, you can't help but notice them because they're right there in the, in the middle. But at the same time, there's other sensations being felt around them. And especially if you move your attention through the body and uh, get used to feeling parts of the body, like the, you know, focus on your, your feet and toes to feel some little sensations there and then on your hands and fingers and on some other parts of the body, and even where the clothing touches the skin. That's often overlooked, but that's also can be a very uh, powerful 
way to stay uh, connected to the present uh, moment. And the sensations on the body are also just present moment uh, sensations. And, uh, you know, they're all over when you're wearing uh, clothing. So that can, and most of them are pleasant. You know, they're kind of just there in the background, but uh, that holds the attention there and you kind of feel the outline of the body. Uh, and when you really uh, uh, develop that awareness of the body, it's almost like, you know, you can feel this outline of the body and the breathing is there in the middle. So that anything that happens in the nervous system, uh, you know, you can more easily be aware of that when any of the sense organs are stimulated. Even the sound, when you hear a sound, that sends vibrations through the nervous system. That, you know, you, if you uh, hear a loud sound, how sometimes the body jerk like that, well, okay, well that's, that's because the sound vibration is going through the uh, nervous system in the same way with all the other senses. Uh, and so, you know, we're, we're listening to that flow of the sense, uh, the six uh, sensory stimulations coming through the body and mind. And the mind basically uh, yeah, arises because of that, the condition of the mind. And the, one of my favorite uh, you know, statements from the Buddha is that the world, the arising of the world, the ceasing of the world, and the path leading to the ceasing of the world is right within this five or six foot long body with its nervous system, sensations and, and thoughts and consciousness. And so basically our idea of the world, you know, is starting with that moment of contact and any of the senses and those vibrations that are then aroused and then the mind uh, going through its process of feeling, perception, volition. And then we, we see the outside world, but it arises as just the sensation. And it arises there within you know, the body and the, and the nervous system. And uh, that's why when you're, you're grounded and centered in that, uh, that's what I call the connection to the present moment. The, this breathing body is the natural connection to present moment uh, awareness. Because again, our mind only goes to the past or future because of clinging and desire and out of its, its habits and so on. And uh, whenever the mind rests in the present moment or rests in the middle, it's resting in the present moment because that's the, the the, the natural vibration of the consciousness is just present moment uh, awareness. And actually, it's very interesting. You know, the word meditation comes from the root word, you know, the spelling, English spelling is M-E-D-I, you know, medi. It's the same root as medicine. It's the same root as mediation. And the meaning of it is keeping your mind in the middle. And so uh, in the middle between the past and the future, which means the present moment. And the same way as medicine, medicine stands in between sickness and health, right? We take medicine to get back to health. And a mediator sits in the middle between uh, disputing parties and brings them to harmony. So you can see that the word meditation itself, even though that's an English word, we know that the Pali word is bhavana, but, uh, but even that means keeping the mind in the middle. And <clears throat> that means uh, the middle between the extremes. There's three basic dualities. There's the body and mind. So you keep it in the middle and see how they're actually intimately connected. Uh, 
keeping, not going toward the body and not going toward the mind, resting in present moment awareness. That's the middle between getting lost in the body or getting lost in the mind. We're maintaining our the natural connection to present moment awareness. And then the past and the future. That's the other duality. So keeping the mind in the present moment is in the middle between the past and the future. Because time is created in the mind, like a ticking clock, right? So you got a clock ticking up, tick, tock, tick, tock. As long as the pendulum is swinging, then the time keeps going, right? What happens when the, the pendulum stops in the middle? Time stops. Because time is created by the movement of the mind between past and future is what creates time. So when you're resting it in the present moment, eventually the, the time will stop. Uh, and you'll be grounded in the present uh, moment. And then the last of these dualities is self and other. We're always seeing everything in terms of me against the world out there. And that's also the feeling of self is created by the past and the future. We remember what we did yesterday, last month, or our history, and we project that into the future. And uh, so the ego and desire basically for pleasurable feeling also is what creates the illusion of the ego, but it's based on the, the you know, the past and the, and the future, especially the future. I want to go here. I want to do that. I want to do that. And that's what keeps the feeling of I strong in the mind. But when you're resting in the present moment, again, there's nothing to feed the ego and it starts to, to uh, dissolve because the sense of I or self is, is similar to a, just a, like an Alka-Seltzer tablet or an ice cube floating around in the water. The ice cube is made of water, isn't it? But it thinks it's separate when the ice cube is floating in the bowl of water. But when the water melts, uh, the ice cube melts, becomes the water. There's no difference between that and the other. So in the same way, that process also occurs by holding the attention in the, in the present moment. Anyway, so uh, I think uh, that may be uh, enough for this kind of, uh, you know, explanation or, you know, kind of just a talk about, uh, you know, this subject. And so I, uh, uh, I want to ask Brian. Brian, is it it's okay if we do a, you know, a few uh, of these exercises that I mentioned? Bhante, uh we'd be very privileged, and uh, I think that'd be wonderful. So uh, I think we we could take a couple minutes break because I also have to rearrange my camera to do this. Uh, and uh, find you, you people at home. You find a place. It's not you're not going to lay down. We're just going to do it from a standing position. Just a four or five simple fairly movements so just find a you know space you know maybe three or four feet uh, where you're not gonna hit some item of furniture or something else where you can stand and see your uh, screen so anyway we're just going to take a couple minutes well, I got to get the, a little bit uh, prepared also and then we'll begin that and then from there we go directly into our med meditation okay Thank you, Bhante. You're welcome.
Can you hear me? Yes, we've got you now, Bhante. Okay. Thank you. Okay, friends. So uh, we're going to do, do a few standing <clears throat> movements based on coordinated with some deep, slow breathing. I uh, hope you have a space uh, near where you can stand. And first of all, just try to stand straight and gently close your eyes, feel your feet pressing the floor. And try to feel your arms and hands hanging at your side. Feel your head balanced on the top of the neck. Try to mentally feel that standing body. And just mentally remember standing, standing, standing. Just the present moment of the body. And then begin some deep, slow breathing. So try to start the breath by uh, gently <clears throat> expanding the abdomen, bringing the air into the lower lung and drawing it up to feel the expansion of the rib cage and bringing the air into the upper part of the, of the chest. Hold the air in the lungs for two seconds and then slowly breathe out to feel that relaxing contraction of the out breath. We feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. And then breathe in again, feel that upward expansion from the abdomen, the rib cage to upper chest. Hold the air a couple seconds. Allow the oxygen to get into the blood, the out breath. And just take a few more deep, slow breaths like that, thinking like this to yourself. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. We want to coordinate these movements with that breathing. That means we do the movement while breathing in. We hold that position for about two or three seconds, holding the air in the lungs, then returning to the starting point on the out breath. And we repeat each movement three times. It helps to get the energy flowing by repeating it three times. Try to feel the sensations that are generated by the movement. And then we'll pause for a little bit longer before going on to a, a, an, another movement. So you can open your eyes and kind of observe your, your screen or me as I kind of lead you through that. So on the next in breath, raise your arms over the head and interlock the fingers Turn the palms up, stretch your head back, stretch your arms up and arch your lower back a little bit. Stretch up. On the out breath, turn the palms down and touch the top of your head. And again, in breath, palms up, straighten the arms, head back, arch back a little. Out breath, touch the top of the head. Third time in breath, hold that upward stretch longer and feel the sensations. Now release the fingers and on the out breath, lower the arms back to the sides. Just gently close your eyes, try to feel the increased sensations in your fingers, and palms. And 
reactivated, charged up cells, oxygenated blood. If you can't feel that, you feel your feet pressing the floor. Just remember standing, standing, standing. Just letting go of your thoughts, just let the thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Keep the feeling of breathing, standing body in the front of the awareness. Okay, next, on an in-breath, lift up on the toes while raising the arms over the head in this way. Face the hands toward each other about six inches apart and stretch up. In the out-breath, come back down, arms to the side, heels to the floor. Just use the breath to help lift and lower the body. In-breath. By blowing up a helium balloon, the body lifts up. Out breath, back down. In. Stretch. Relax. You feel the sensations in your hands or fingers or any other bodily sensations you might notice. They're all present moment sensations. If you can't feel anything, feel your feet pressing the floor. See if you can feel where the clothing rubs against the skin on different places. It's all right there in the present moment awareness. Standing. 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 Okay, next we're going to do side bending. So on the next in breath, raise both arms up over the head again in this way. And keep your fingers and arms straight close to your head. And on the out breath, bend over the right side as far as you comfortably can. But keep your arms and hands parallel to each other. In breath, lift up. Then the other side, out breath. In breath. Again to the right, out breath. In. Out. In. Once more to each side, out breath to the right. In. Out. In. And on the out breath, lower the arms. Relax, you can close the eyes, keep the attention focused inside. Just try to feel your feet pressing the floor, the arms and the hands at the sides. 
slowly touching the skin on different places. The head balanced on the top. See if you can mentally feel the vague outline of the standing body. Feet underneath, arms at the side, head on top. Breathing in the middle of them. Different pulsations, sensations. Standing. 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 Here and now, the body. Letting go of the past, the future. Can now spread your feet apart about three feet. Actually have some room to hold your arms out to the side without hitting somebody else or hitting a wall if you can. We're going to do twisting of the spine, lateral twisting. So breathe in. On the out breath, look to the right hand and twist the body around to the right. Keep your eyes focused on the hand going back. In breath, come back to the front. You let your feet turn with the body. And next out breath, turn to the left. In breath back to the front. Again to the right, out breath. In breath. Front. To the left, out breath. In. Once more to each side. Just on your own. Then you come back to the front. Lower the arms, relax. Just feel the sensations in your shoulders, your other places. When the clothing touches the shoulders or arms. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Hands touching the side. The head on top. Just this body exactly as it is. Here and now. Natural present moment of awareness. Connected to the body. Now we're going to do forward and backward bending. You have to be careful with the back bend, not to bend back too far, especially if you have stiff back. Uh, <clears throat> keep the legs spread apart about three feet. Let your hands touch the front of your legs. And breathe in. On the out breath, bend forward, let your hands slide down to your kneecaps the first time. Keep the head up, looking out straight ahead. And try to flatten the spine, get the hump out of the spine. Legs straight. In breath, lift up. 
move the hands under the buttocks for support. And carefully let the head go back, breathe out, bend backward gently, not too far the first time, keep the eyes open. In breath, carefully lift up, you don't have any shaking. In the out breath, again, let the hands come down below the knees about halfway. Still keep the head up, legs straight. In breath, lift up. And again, the back bend, bend back a little bit more. In breath, lift up. And the third time, let the hands come down as far as you can toward the feet. Then hold that position longer. Feel the stretch in the hamstring muscle, the back of the leg. Come up for an in-breath. Once more, the back bend, out breath. In-breath, lift up. On the out-breath, just relax. Feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the arms and hands hanging at the side. Feel the clothing touching the skin, the different pressing. The head balanced on top. Just this body exactly as it is here and now. I feel that connection to the present moment, standing, standing. Now bring your leg, feet back together. And it is one last simple movement, the head turning. Try not to turn your shoulders while doing this. And then on the in-breath, pivot the head, turn the head to the right. As far as you comfortably can, try to look over your right shoulder. On the out breath, turn the head 180 degrees back toward the left, look over the left shoulder, Just concentrate into the neck vertebrae. Imagine or feel them receding up. In breath, back to the right. Out breath, left. In breath, right. Out breath, left. In the next in breath, let the head stop in the center. Just relax. Just keep feeling the whole body. Feel the outline of standing body in the mind's eye. 
sense of the feet underneath, the arms at the side, the head on the top. That's a perception. And all those different sensations are feeding into the brain. The brain weaves them together, produce the idea of a body, standing body. And that's a perception based on the feeling, the sensation, which are just cellular vibrations. We feel that organic aliveness of the whole body. Standing. 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 Okay, friends, so let's come back to our seats and get ready for uh, the meditation. Let's try to <clears throat> sit in a comfortable position, especially be able to keep your back straight. Try not to lean up on the back of a chair. Try to align the back of the head and the spine in a straight line, keeping the chin lifted up level to the floor. Just place your hands either one on top of the other in your lap or against the abdomen, resting on your legs. Try not to move them during the meditation period. Just gently close your eyes. 
first of all, just focus your attention down to where your buttocks press the seat. Just feel that hardness, that contact. The sensations produced by that contact. It's the earth vibration feeling of solidity. Just remember that you're sitting. Now let the awareness kind of move down your legs into the feet. Feel your feet and toes where the feet press the floor. Or feel some sensations in your feet or toes. Sensation of the socks rubbing on the skin of the feet. A subtle pulse of blood in the feet. Where the feet are crossed and touched together with the toes. And just remember sitting. Now let the awareness move up to feel your hands and fingers where they touch together or touch your legs. It's also the earth vibration. Cells being pressed together, producing these sensations. You can feel the subtle pulse of blood in the fingers, the palms. Feel the outline of individual fingers or thumbs. This present moment, focus, attention. Just letting go of your thoughts, just let the thoughts come and go in the back of the awareness. Just keep this body, body parts in the front of the awareness. Now feel the weight of the arms hanging from the shoulders. Feel the clothing touches the skin of the shoulders arms. Relax the shoulders. Now move the attention up to feel your head balanced on top of the neck. See if you can find the center of gravity of the head and spine over the hips by gently moving the whole head and spine backwards a little until you sense that tipping point where the body might go backwards and just stop short of that. Just mentally feel that erect posture. And just mentally remember sitting, sitting, Now feel your face, 
so you can feel it, or imagine the skin stretched over the front of the skull, the forehead and nose, the chin. And feel the lips touching together, the upper lip touching the lower lip. It's also the earth vibration. And be aware of the dryness or moistness in the lip. There's the moist sensations, the water element, the water vibration. And feel the tongue laying in the mouth. Also, if you feel any saliva, it's the water vibration. If you were any teeth touching together, or the gums and the jaws. And now feel the eyes resting in the sockets. And the eyelids stretched over the eyeballs. You might notice some light or colors or patterns or just darkness. You might see a mental image. You feel the subtle eye movements, even the pulse of blood in the capillaries of the eyes or eyelids. And from that point behind the eyes, just try to mentally feel the vague outline of the sitting body, just the sense of the buttocks and feet underneath, the arms and the hands at the sides or in the middle. The head balanced on top. The clothing touching the skin in different places. Just all those different sensations feeding in to the nervous system, to the brain, giving rise to the perception, the idea of the sitting body it belongs to me. It's just an idea created out of just cellular vibration.
and now begin some <clears throat> deep, slow breathing again. Develop mindfulness of breathing. And try to take two or three seconds to expand the abdomen, rib cage, and chest. Hold the air in one or two seconds to feel the pause and feel the relaxing contraction of the out breath. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Let's take several more breaths like that, cultivating this basic mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. So breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. See if you can feel when the air enters the nostril, immediately feel the expansion of the lungs, and the contraction of the lungs and the air going out of the nostril. That's the whole breath and body. The incoming breath and the brief pause. The outgoing breath and the brief pause. Four phases of the breathing cycle. It's like a scientist looking down through a microscope. Just kind of tune the attention, feel that process of breathing. Feeling those sensations. So now we're going to also try to develop a little bit better concentration by counting the breaths from one to ten. So keep the attention and focus there in the center of the body. On the next incoming breath. Mentally count one, the contracting out breath also count one, the next in breath two, out breath two. In breath three, out breath three, in breath four, out breath four in breath five out breath five
in breath six. Out breath six. In breath seven. Out breath seven. In breath eight. Out breath eight. In breath nine. Out breath nine. In breath ten. Out breath ten. Now just continue the counting. Just continue any deep breathing, letting the breathing return to its uncontrolled, more relaxed, shorter cycles. But continue to feel it. Just keep the attention focused there in the center of the body. Wherever you can feel the breath the easiest, whether it's at the tip of the nose or the abdomen, the chest. And just know when the breath is coming in. And know when the breath is going out. We know it by feeling it. Feeling the sensation. If it helps you to stay focused, you can simply just remember in, in, sitting, out, out, sitting. Connection to the present moment of the body. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting, breath by breath, moment by moment. Try to have the feeling of like a scientist sitting in the laboratory. This body is the meditator's laboratory. And looking down to the microscope of focused awareness. It's turning up the power of the mental microscope. To notice the details. The breathing process. Try to feel the whole breath body. Expanding in breath, the brief pause, the contracting out breath, the brief pause. And try to notice how each breath is different. Sometimes longer, 
sometimes short. Sometimes you feel it going to the nostrils, sometimes you feel it in the abdomen or the chest. It's always changing. In, in sitting, out, out, sitting, the brief pauses between the breaths, you feel that outline of the sitting body, this breathing body is going on within the larger sitting body. It's contemplating the body in the body. The body of breathing within the larger body all around. Especially with each out breath, you feel the body and mind relaxing more and more into the present moment. At the same time, be alert for thoughts sneaking up into the mind to steal your attention away. If you get caught up in thinking, recognize it as thinking, thinking. Just gently let go of the thoughts. Just take a deep, slow breath, bring the mind back into the body. Back to in, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Even while feeling the breathing, also notice other sensations coming and going in or around that breathing awareness. To that breathing body awareness. They just naturally appear Arise, last a moment or two, vanish.
The in-breath arises and vanishes. The out-breath arises and vanishes. Other sensations arise and vanish. There's body movement, there's itch, there's pulse of blood. Cultivating both mindfulness and concentration. The concentration is the ability to hold the attention, and the feeling, the breathing, the body. But the mindfulness is the alertness that can notice other hindrances other distracting thoughts or sensations trying to pull our mind away. Quicker you notice distractions, overcome them, let go of them. The concentration gets stronger with less interruption. the body and mind relaxes. Should be able to notice more and more subtle sensations, vibrations coming and going, the breathing body. Should be able to notice subtler urges or Thoughts arising in the mind. To let go of them before getting lost in them.
Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. An ongoing, continuous connection to the present moment, stream of awareness. Your sensations come and go, thoughts come and go, perceptions come and go, pleasure or pain come and go, drowsiness comes and goes. These are all just the constant stream and flux of impermanence. The body, mind, world passing through nervous system. And just beneath all that coming and going, or mental chaos, or pains, or drowsiness, is the parallel dimension of the now of the present moment. And it's always there, literally, just beneath your nose. If we lose that connection to the breathing body, to the present moment, then the mind gets easily lost and tossed about on the stormy waves of past and future neurotic thinking, greed, hatred, and deluded thoughts, worry, fear. This body is always inviting you to come and see. To come back home. To rest in the present moment. Rest with the cellular vibration.
what kind of perceptions arise based on that sound contact. things, the five aggregates of this body, mind, and world are impermanent. When one sees this with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the path to purity, to freedom. And thus spoke the Buddha. Now I invite you to begin the meditation by chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. Uh, we take a deep breath and on our out breath, we chant the, the word slowly on the out breath. We pause, breathe in again three times. You feel that vibration in your body and mind. So breathe in. So. Place your hands at the edge of your knees and take one more deep breath. And as you breathe in, stretch your head back, pull your hands against the knees, arch your lower back, hold it a few moments. And lift the head up and on an out breath, Press the chin to the top of the chest to stretch the neck vertebrae. And breathe in, lift the chin up level to the floor on an in breath. And relax on the out breath. Put a smile on your face. So friends, it's been wonderful uh, being with you and sharing uh, with you uh, this afternoon and being able to sit back in the, the Bhavana Society Meditation Hall. Brings back a lot of wonderful memories. One that we don't cling to. 
Okay, friends, so I think uh, it's about to, our time is up. And so probably not any time for any uh, questions or so. But I want to wish you all the, the best in your meditation practice. And as Bhante G was mentioning this morning, uh, you know, ideally it's good if you could meditate and for you know, a longer meditation uh, in the morning and evening, but especially uh, doing those what I call M&Ms, which are minute meditations during the day. So just an M&M candy is short and sweet, small and sweet. So is a meditator's M&M, pausing for a minute to come back to the present moment, to feel the body grounded in the present moment, or take a few deep, slow breaths letting go of that what you're ever urged for the future, rush to the future, just relax. By doing that as often as you can during the day, it can even be more often than once an hour, but at least that much, as Bhantaji mentioned, that you might even feel like meditating uh, more in the evening or so. Anyway, uh, I want to wish you all the the best in your practice. And uh, remember, mindfulness a day keeps dukkha away. And Namo Buddhaya. Thank you very much, Bhante Rahula. I think I can speak for all 174 of us that we are very, very grateful. One question how uh, how can participants um, uh, get a hold of your teachings in the future? How can they practice with you? Uh, how can they be in touch with you? Well, just as the Bhavana Society has been having our Zoom programs every day uh, uh, in this last uh, almost uh, nine months, uh, I've also been giving uh, two Zoom sessions a week on Wednesday evening. It's a sutta study and a guided meditation on Sunday afternoons. It's a, it's a, has been a Dhamma talk. Now I've been going over some uh, Dhammapada verses. So anyway, it's about some talk or discussion for about uh, uh, 50 minutes. And then we, we uh, do uh, some of those standing exercises uh, every time, just like I was doing with you today. And then sitting for a guided meditation, which is quite similar to what I was giving even uh, today. So uh, those are all on our Lion of Wisdom YouTube channel. So if you just look that up, Lion of Panyasiha, Lion of Wisdom uh, YouTube channel, or go to our website, www.lionwisdom.org. That's our website and you can click the videos and you'll see that uh, link to the YouTube channel and all of our, the talks are put up there. Uh, there, so uh, that's that's the best place to, to look. Yeah. Sadhu Bhante, thank you again. Uh, you're all very welcome. And I want to again thank Bhante G for you know all of his efforts and you know keeping the Bhavana Society going and, and and having these wonderful programs. And you can see you you get almost 200 people listening to your Zoom programs. Only about uh, 30 or 40 come to mind. So it's very much more good work. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'll uh, let you go and uh, hope to see you again sometime. Thank you, Bhante. Uh, for all you retreatants, um, we have a, a 10 to 15 minute break. Uh, we will reconvene.